to go over a few items. This session will be recorded and we will send out a link to the recording to everyone who registered within 24 to 48 hours after the presentation. We also have recordings of all previous webinars on our website in the event that you missed any in the past at dunsolutions.com. Also, if you have any questions during today's presentation, we encourage you to submit them and we'll address as many as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If the question is somewhat complex and we need more time to answer, we do promise to follow up with you for those. So let's take a look at today's agenda. I will begin by doing introductions to the Solutions Group. From there, I'll we'll turn it over to today's presenter, Janani Eshwaran, an analytics consultant here at Dunn Solutions. Janani will discuss the impact of IoT data, Microsoft Azure, and Hortonworks data platform, and then she will then cover a demo and use um, a use case in logics industry, logistics industry, rather. From there, we will cover what's next. So let's begin. Dunn Solutions has a long history of delivering innovative business technology solutions. We are headquartered just outside of Chicago and have offices in Minneapolis, Raleigh, and Bangalore, India. Our offerings fall into two practice areas. Our application development solutions feature portals, e-commerce, and content managed websites, mobile application development, and custom application development. Our analytics solutions feature analytics and BI platforms, as well as data warehouses and data integration. We are authorized SAP, LifeRay, and Microsoft training providers and offer classroom, virtual, private, and custom options. We believe that training is important because once we deliver a solution, we want to make sure that those who need it know how to use it and maintain it. Our clients, some of which are included here, are a combination of Fortune 500, mid-market companies, government agencies, and nonprofits across all verticals. About 80% of our business are commercial clients and 20% are nonprofit and government. We maintain strong partnerships with top technology companies in order to offer our clients the most innovative solutions available today. Our analytics practice helps deliver information to decision makers throughout your organization so that it runs better. We can help with decision making by not only looking into the rear view mirror, but also looking forward into the future by leveraging predictive analytics and data mining techniques. Thank you for allowing me to introduce you to Dunn Solutions. I will now hand over the presentation to Janani. Welcome, Janani. Thanks, Megan. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm Janani Ishwaran from Dawn Solutions Group, working as an analytics consultant in big data area at a Skokie office, Illinois. So before moving on to our presentation today, let me ask you a question. Who do you think is a real competitor for, of any business? So some may think it will be any business or organization who do similar kind of business like us, but I would say that is a wrong answer. Guess who is the real competitor? It's none other than our own customers. So customer experience is the next competitive battleground in today's business world because of all this IoT technologies. If you do build a great customer experience, Customer tell each other about your product, continue to buy from you, and often shop with you, refer other customers, and in general, they'll be a superstar advocate for your business. So you don't need a very good promotion or marketing for your product. Customer, they themselves will be a very good marketer because word of mouth marketing is the biggest powerful marketing in today's business world. So. You, can, you have to satisfy your customer so they can do your free marketing. So if, you're mo if the customer is most unhappy, you can learn from their experience. So you may wonder why am I speaking about all this customer experience when it is a real-time IoT data. Yes, today let's see how you can satisfy your customer from the IoT data and also how you will learn from the bad customer experience with this webinar. So as Megan said, these are the agendas for today. Let me start with the impact of IoT data in any industry or organization. So let me give an introduction about IoT. Many of you know what is IoT, but still let me give a simpler definition because there are many definitions. So it's nothing but connected and communicating devices 
or you can say network of physical objects with embedded technologies to sense and communicate with each other. And the definition keep on changing. So this is a simple way you can say uh, internet of things. And according to statistics, you can see that in 2012, there were 8.7 billion of devices. And now it is 22.9 billion devices. And in future, if you can see, it can cross over more than 50 billion de IoT devices. So this is how uh, the IoT devices are being consumed by the customers all around the world. So what is the opportunity given by this IoT data? If you can take a uh, logistic industry, they have the sensors placed in everywhere in all their trucks and also in their warehouse so that they can utilize the space in the warehouse. Also, they can give real-time uh, analytics and feedbacks or anything to the truck drivers, for example, if they want to alert in about weather or some uh, speeding thing, everything you can alert it using the sensors because all these telematic devices placed in the truck, they send all these data uh, and you can consume all this IoT data and then give some insights. And coming to home, if you, for example, in Google Nest, you have the, you can have a security devices and many other devices like, for example, in these days you have IoT lights uh, where you can turn in and turn off using your mobile app or in may, many other kitchen utilities. You can, all these devices are connected to internet and now you can manage anywhere from your, uh, from your work, not only from your home, you can control them from anywhere uh, in the world. So and next is uh, if we come to smart devices like Apple Watch and Fitbit, they are uh, generating a lot of data, which is in turn used by the organization to gain some insight. And also, if you can see in your mobile app, if you have Fitbit or Apple Watch, you can track how much steps you have taken. So all these devices, they keep generating the data so much, and they are consumed by all this organization to gain some insights and give a beautiful visualization to the customer and also improve the customer experience. Uh, so that's how uh, Internet of Things are playing a very good important role in, uh, this, in this space business. And coming to how organizations benefit fr from IoT data. So <clears throat> the recent inventions in technology make users to generate data using IoT devices. And business are capturing increasing volume of data from IoT devices via intermediate communication devices like mobile or anything, big data tools. These data are in turn stored in cloud or local storage devices. And these stored data need to be analyzed more deeply and more immediately to reap some values. Should be some, some data, we, should, we can have some real time insights and using stream analytics that, which will uh, in turn let enterprises easily combine real-time streams of data with the historic data present in the database. Uh, you can gain beautiful insights and also uh, provide some alerts to, or you can have some dashboards which can be visualized and gain some insights. So coming to the breakdown of IoT usage, uh, if you, you can see the logistics uh, industry uh, take more advantage of this IoT devices and by placing all their uh, telematic devices in the trucks and gave, they gain some insights out of it. But let's see how they're doing in, the, in this webinar. And coming to traffic issues, yeah, you can see many uh, sensors placed everywhere in your uh, highways and uh, you can get the data from there. For example, iPass or EasyPass, many people have it in your car and they send uh, the real, I mean, they can just have the, Tickets paid or tolls paid there. So and the toll, I mean the sensors placed in the toll gate are observing those sense and then sending the uh, you are sending a message to you that the toll has been paid. And <clears throat> in daily life, like as I said, Google Nest and uh, IoT light bulbs placed or many kitchen utilities in your home. All this, if you can see the breakdown. The logistic industry takes more advantage of this IoT uh, devices. And, but in near future, you can see every industry has plays a very good role and important role in, the, in making use of this IoT devices. So let's move on to the technical part, which is like Microsoft Azure and 
Hortonworks data platform, how these two are used to solve this IoT challenge. So analytics landscape is, landscape is changing. That's because uh, we have IoT data coming fast and in huge volumes, and they are not structured. But earlier, RDBMS was the only storage solution, but now we have uh, many storage options like SAP, HANA, MongoDB, HDFS, etc., to handle volume, variety, and velocity of the IoT data. Moreover, organization data center does not scale up. So what will be the solution for this? Yes, we have Microsoft Azure to rescue us from scaling up and storing all this uh, high volume and speed variety of data. So how Microsoft provides us with more uh, number of capabilities, uh, which is easy to access and easy to spin up and when you need, and you can pay us whenever you are uh, using those resources. So rather than focusing on infrastructure, your team can focus on analytics part or any other development part for your business. So Microsoft Azure will come and rescue you there rather than uh, planning for an infrastructure or something like that. And it is also very super inexpensive because you are paying for what you use. And in Microsoft Azure, you pay in a Harley wise. So if you're, if you're not using your resources, you can pause any time and then you can pay what for what you used. So why Hortonworks data platform? Because they have, uh, if you can see, these are the some of the tools uh, which are tightly integrated in Hortonworks data platform. And so you don't need to install each and every tools. We have for data governance and for life cycle we, and for data scooping, uh, we are uh, import and export. You can have all these tools here in this uh, listed here, and in for data access, you have big, high HBase, strong like they act for HBase access a NoSQL database, and for high you can use a SQL kind of language to query your data stored in the data warehouse in high. So all these tools are tightly integrated in Hortonworks data platform, and so that's why uh, I choose this platform or we choose our organization choose this platform for big data analytics and all this data huge volume of data are stored in HDFS file system so so these are very good uh, platform this is a very good platform to do your big data analytics and so we choose this Hortonworks data platform for us for doing the analytics so moving on to a demo uh, I use a use case for today's demo will be in a logistic industry. So before going on to demo, let me give uh, let me give some words about how uh, IoT impacts on logistic industry. Uh, in the middle of hype surrounding IoT to IoT devices today, one thing is clear that logistic industry is a key player who benefits from this IoT uh, revolution. Sorry. Uh, with millions of shipments being moved, tracked, and stored by a variety of machines and people each day, it is no surprise that logistic industry and IoT are perfect match. In logistics, IoT can connect different assets along the supply chain and then al analyze the data generated from these connections to capture new insight. By doing so, IoT enables logistic providers to unlock higher level of operational efficiency while creating customized, dynamic, and automated services for their customers. So that's why we uh, IoT plays a very important role in a logistic industry. And then, so how lo a logistic industry is benefited from IoT data? So I have taken three uh, three of the benefits. Some one is warehouse operations, how they are improving the warehousing operations with IoT with the help of IoT data and fleet transportation and last mile delivery. So coming to warehousing, with thousands of different types of uh, goods being stored in a warehouse, every square meter of a warehouse space is, must be optimally used, utilized to ensure specific goods can be retrieved, processed, and delivered as fast as possible. In the warehouse, the adoption of item level tagging 
called as RFID, which you can see in every product. It will generate some uh, data so that you can have a smart delivery uh, by utilizing the space there. So if, uh, if you want to capture some uh, data of your product, you can just scan it wherever you are in the warehouse and you can just go there and fetch the product rather than <clears throat> wasting the time uh, searching everywhere in the warehouse. So RFID is one of the things for warehousing which, which improves the operations in warehouse. And next, coming to fleet transportation. Uh, today it is already possible to track and monitor a container in a freight in the middle of Pacific Ocean because telematic sensors placed in trucks and tags of a, of, on an, any item can transmit data on the location whether and also they can say uh, whether any threshold has been crossed or if a package has been opened, opened to detect any theft has happened or something like that. So uh, sensors play a very good important role in fleet transportation. And next is last mile delivery, which is a very important step in any logistic industry because uh, it consumes a lot of labor. For example, uh, if a, uh, if a, for example, if you take a FedEx or UPS Dropbox, if there is no uh, product or any package uh, has been dropped by a customer, so the, uh, this waste of time or uh, the fuel consumption is more uh, by the um, so the driver has to travel there and see uh, and get disappointed if there is no package left in the drop box. So if you place a sensor in those uh, drop box, which can say whether there has been uh, if the drop box is empty or not, then uh, if it is empty, you can just optimize the route in real time for the driver so that he don't, he does not go to that location and rather he can re, we can redirect him to the different route. So that's how IoT sensors play a very good important role in last mile delivery uh, so that the customers are benefited by getting their products very soon. So let's set this. Uh, uh, so today you are in a right place if you're trying to capture data from IoT devices in real time and store those data in, re uh, in real time in any of the data warehouse or uh, storage and perform analysis while the data is streaming and send notification and business alerts to users in real time. Uh, or if you want to visualize the information and gain some insight of, of this visualization of IoT data. So let's so for doing that, what do you need? You need a real time streaming application, which is nothing but I'm using Strom here. Uh, you can also use Spark, Apache Spark. Since my uh, requirement was limited to stream processing, I'm using Strom. If it was batch processing or if it requires graph processing or SQL access, then I would have preferred Spark, but I'm limiting myself to Strom because of my requirement. And then we need a HTTP cluster, which is Hortonworks Data Platform Cluster. This has you hosted in uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, and then a large data store like Hive, HBase, and HDFS, uh, which is also inside HTTP cluster in uh, Microsoft Azure, and a Power BI for visualization. And mo uh, there is one more interesting thing that uh, we have also included a mobile app wherein you will get a real time alert. So, yeah, we can see how we get the real time uh, uh, alerts by after once the data, IoT data, which is being streamed is being analyzed and then give, uh, send some notification to mobile app. So this is our demo on uh, architecture for today. So we, we should have a sensor placed on the truck, there, but here we will uh, have a console application which will be acting as our trucks, so this 15 trucks, and which generates the data to the, uh, the data and then which is co collected by Kafka. Kafka is a message broker, so if you're, uh, we will redirect all the, I mean, all the data, IoT data events to Kafka, which collects uh, because it has a very good uh, threshold and uh, real, uh, reliability. So I have used Kafka. You can also use many other tools that are available. Uh, based on my requirement, I used Kafka. And then, 
IoT device sends lots of data, different uh, many ad, uh, data, but I have taken only key attributes like truck truck ID, driver ID, and the weather, uh, weather current weather of the truck, where, of the location where the truck is currently now, and also the location uh, of the truck, and then tra transmit all these key attributes to Strom, which in turn do this real-time analysis, and then stream processing, uh, and then send it to uh, HDFS. Uh, along with it, it also, if there is any anomaly detected, it's the anomaly is then alerted using a mobile app, uh, or I have also used an email notification, so you can have, you can see how the, uh, if there is any anomaly detected, how the alerts have been sent in real time. And then, process, uh, okay, once this has been stored in Hadoop, you can also have a beautiful insight uh, or gain some insight uh, using Power BI. Uh, like you can get benefited from this IoT data like to make some decisions in your business. So let's see how one of the uh, business use case, how they are getting benefited with the IoT data which is stored in Hadoop. So let's get started with the demo. The first step is collect sensor data using Apache Kafka. So let me create a topic for Kafka. Uh, I'm moving on to my I'm moving on to my uh, Hadoop cluster where I have Kafka. So first, let me move on to the Kafka install install directory uh, and then create a topic. So I've created a topic sensor data one. Yeah, it has created the topic. So, and then the second step would be uh, send this data uh, to Strong and collect only the key attributes. So let's uh, start a console application which will in turn send the data to uh, Kafka and then which is consumed by Strong. So this is my, uh, I'm moving on to my directory where my uh, pro console application has been written, which generates the data, uh, which is in turn pushed to Kafka, and from Kafka, it is then in turn consumed by Strong for processing. So the, uh, now the data is Started generated by uh, started generator uh, by the trucks. So as and when the data is getting generated, if there is any anomaly detected, yeah, that is our next step. Yeah, you can hear the noise that we got an alert. Yeah. So this is a mobile application. So you can also see I have got an email notification as well. So this is our mobile application, which uh, generates, I mean, which gets not notify the customers if there is any anomaly detected. So here I have so many alerts for the previous events, uh, but currently as you can see, see within 1127 and here it is 26, just got changed. You got an alert notification. If you click on the alert, uh, I have uh, there is a setting in this mobile app that if you want to consume alerts only for this particular truck, you can consume it. Uh, so I have I'm consuming only for the truck 13. So I'm a bit slow. Sorry. So if you open this message, you can see that some truck has has been detected some anomaly. Or you can go and check the email as well, not this. Yeah, see there are so many emails. Uh, this has, in my email, it is not specific to one particular truck. You can, you will get all the alerts for every 15 trucks if there is any anomaly detected. So for truck 10, they have, the driver has crossed the speed 
limit and so we are getting a speed alert and for truck 13 you can see that truck 13 has breakdown so we will send a notification to the customer saying that your order will be delayed delivery will be delayed for your order because the truck has breakdown so that's how you will send the notification to the customers uh, using your mobile app and then you can also by getting this feeds or uh, I mean events on real time anomaly detected in real time uh, you can also uh, satisfy your customer by saying that okay uh, we are sorry for this delay you can uh, we are giving you some offers like or you can say some uh, we can we are giving you some coupons because of this uh, event so yeah not sure why it's not opening so I can show you the message okay so it's, it will be the same message like here uh, the truck has breakdown for as we got here for truck number 13 and then moving on to a next step yeah well we got an alert and now we have we are, we'll just see how data has been stored in the Hadoop data file system. Here I have used Hive, so I'm going to show you here. So this is Hive user interface for my cluster, Hadoop cluster. So if you execute select start from IoT data, all the data are stored in this table. This is uh, data. So what all I'm capturing is driver ID, truck ID, even time, even type, whether it is normal, whether the driver is uh, in the normal speed or if he is over speeding or if there is any breakdown or something like that and the longitude and latitude of the truck, current uh, location of the truck and whether it is for the, the current location of the truck is under uh, uh, is facing some fog climate or rainy or if it is windy and the root name where where the truck is right now like Illinois 37 I 97 or 27 or 294 or something like that and then state where the current state and also the event date so these are the things uh, key attributes which I'm taking from the IOT data and then after that uh, I'm utilizing the data stored in this enterprise data warehouse uh, so the which we're using uh, in Power BI will get the visualization let's see how you get the visualization out there so I've used Power BI which will in turn consume this IOT data in high in which I showed you now in IOT data table so if you can see you can drill down this data uh, let's see which driver had many number of uh, bad, rec um, bad records in driving so if you can see Daniel has more number of bad records uh, in driving so he has to oversee and say unsafe tailing and something like that so let's see whether he's a really a bad driver or not uh, if you can see here here uh, I have a, a chart which says uh, for, for whether the fog impacted driving conditions so if it is zero there was no fog if it is one there was fog and likewise for uh, I have also have uh, for rainy and for wind if there is a wind which impacted the driving or if it's rain which impacted the driving driving so let's analyze for Daniel whether it's a good driver or not of course by the looking at this chart we say he's a bad driver but let's really look into the data and find out whether he's a good driver or bad driver so if you can check on this there was no fog no rain and no wind but still he has over speed so of course he's a bad driver and then even here if you can unsafe tailing here also there was no wind fog wind and rain but still he has done that uh, bad, bad I mean bad driving so likewise you can conclude that he is a bad driver but if at all if you come to Logan uh, you can see that he also has some lane departure but the fog was the reason because of the because of fog he was was not able to see you can conclude that and that's why you can excuse Logan 
yeah, or you can conclude that he's not a bad driver. So that's how you, and he has, no, there was no wind and no rainy, only fog. So that's why we can, con we can conclude that Logan is a good driver. So this might be a sample data, but that's how you have to drill down to this data and get some insights. And coming to analyzing the breakdowns, which is a very important thing in the logistic industry to find out which truck uh, model is best and what is the best route to um, suggest the drivers in future. So if you can see here, the truck models here, and uh, model three and model two are performing, uh, they had more number of breakdowns. So if you can click on that, model three, the, uh, the truck was, on the route, route 27, and this route was in New York. So, in, and this this um, truck model three is being manufactured by manufacturer three. I didn't give the specific XX or MM or A kind names, but just to this is a sample data. So I just have to say manufacturer three, model three, or something like that. So this is how you can drill down, and then you can also. Think about next time purchasing this truck uh, to for our delivery purpose. And also the Route 27, it has more number of breakdowns. So we can in future avoid this route uh, because there might be some other conditions like many uh, pit holes or something like that. So you can conclude that you can in future, we don't want to use model three truck and also route 27 for our delivery. So that's how you gain some insights using out of IoT data. So let's recap uh, our demonstration. We have truck or vehicles with telematic sensors and then those are sen uh, data are consumed by Kafka and from Kafka, we are collecting only the key attributes, as I mentioned, driver ID, truck ID, weather, and location. And then we are pushing those collected data to uh, via to Hadoop to via Strom, and also we analyze the data in Strom to gain some real-time analytics. And then the data is stored here for batch or batch analysis. And then from there, we take on the data for uh, visualization using Power BI. So this was our demo architecture today, and we saw the demo we saw now. And what's next? So if you are thinking about taking an advantage of the IoT device in your organization, and if you're not getting benefited from the data being generated, or if you want to gain some analytics out of your IoT data, please contact us uh, in the email ID displayed below, and we'll help you execute. So. Thank you. And if there is any question, please uh, contact me in the email ID displayed there. Over to Megan. Thank you, Janani. Great presentation. Um, yes, everyone, like Janani said, if you have any questions, please feel free to email her, and we will see you at the next webinar.